honestly, um, I feel that uh, often when I'm performing in this show. It, it has uh, brought me so much joy and connected me with like so many amazing artists. And uh, quite quite honestly, like I grew up this huge Michael Jackson fan. You did? So, oh, I wanted to talk about this. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So uh, this is an easy one, honestly. Like I. Th my earliest memory of, of, of dancing to Michael's music was probably when I was like nine years old. Uh, my mom uh, like went and rented this like VHS of um, this movie called That's Dancing, I think it was called, or, or That's Entertainment, I think it was. And it was hosted by- It's a movie? Uh, it's a movie. It was like, they made like, I think it was, I think it's That's Entertainment. And it's um, it's like, it takes dance from classic films and it talks about like the sort of um, the lineage of it, I suppose. It's hosted by Gene Kelly and Gene Kelly is like just kind of sequencing through um, the eras of dance, like yeah. in film. And it ends because I think, I think this was made in like the eighties, uh, this film. And so the last segment is like supposed to be like present day and it's like beat it and thriller and oh, so wow. i would like play this uh video over and over again and i i like taught myself the like choreography from beat it because i was like obsessed with it were you already uh, in dance class yeah. by that point yeah i was already in dance i when did you had, start dancing? I, I started dancing uh like formally or like semi-formally i guess uh when i was like five years old um, was it your request? Kind of. I was like pretty rambunctious and had a lot of energy and I, I really loved music. I was like always dancing around uh, the house. Yeah. And uh, my mom uh, had also had like aspirations of like, not necessarily being a dancer, but taking dance class when she was a kid and she never got to do it. Huh. So the story is that she actually enrolled uh, herself in dance classes the same day she also enrolled me in dance oh, classes and, love yeah and she's been taking she's been taking dance uh ever since uh she still takes her like wednesday night dance classes she takes tap and jazz oh, um, wait, what was the class was it tap so for me i was like so young that uh the first class i took was like a ballet class like a baby ballet class yeah um but it was uh, not very long until I discovered tap dance. And I, it was like at the recital and I was like, wait a second, what are they doing? Are they doing? That. Um, that was also kind of life changing, right? Like discovering that art form. And um, I mean, from that moment on, I, I, I still talked about it just the other day, just how much of an influence tap dance has had on, well, sure my life, but also like the way I interpret art even yeah. you know, oh, tell me more. Well, the way I like listen to music, the way yeah. I uh, even watch movies that have music, I feel like I'm very fascinated with rhythm. Yeah. I'm very fascinated with, like timing of things, yeah. like both musical but also in the way we speak and communicate and share information. Like yeah. they're uh, almost intrinsic um, rhythm. Yeah, 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 or like calibrate to each other. Um, there's like that, that like, I was fascinated by this. Um, I don't know the full truth of this, but that idea that an audience member um, experiencing a performance, uh, you, your, your like heart rate starts to match the people around you or like your, there's something about that. I don't, I don't know that's back science. But there's something that I read at, at one point that talks about the relationship you have with the other people around you when you're experiencing something communal, right? And you're experiencing yeah. like a, yeah. I think it's the most magical feeling, sort of like riding the wave with the audience. And then from a, from a spectator perspective, like when you look around and everyone's going through what you're going through. And I just think it's the most like authentic way to create community. And it's really magical. I agree. I, I find myself uh, very lucky to be a part of You like, do it every night. Yeah, it's really special. Yeah. It's really 
and MJ in particular um, has been um, extra fulfilling because I find it to be um, catering to an audience that doesn't typically go see Broadway. Right. And, and we feel that energy in in uh, from from the stage. Like these folks are coming in and um, bringing a new energy to the space that I don't know um, uh, people are like used to. But I think that's that's so important. I feel like the more and more we can recalibrate what the theater is and how it works and what it does, yeah. that it's more inclusive, right? So that more people feel at home in those yeah, spaces. Yeah, I just feel like theater needs to like, we young people need to fall back in love with theater. You know, like most theaters across America are hanging on by a thread by the older community. And it's like, yeah. you guys go to theater. Oh, you're someone's king. I'm what? Because Ryan, Ryan is my king. Tyler Haynes. <laughs> It's your friend. Oh, Tyler. Yeah, it's my friend. Hi, Tyler. Um, wait, let me tell people what we're doing, okay? Yes, yes, I know. You guys? It's crazy. I, I, it's, I, it's so fun. Are you ready? Do you have your materials? Yes. Oh my God, you guys. So we have this thing called Clay Magic. And while we talk about Ryan's journey to Broadway and his joy, um, we're just going to make some puppets and then we're going to introduce them to each other. It's going to be really exciting. I have my tools. I have my craft box. Do you have box. an idea of where you're, which direction you're going? I do. I sat down and was like, this is what I want to do today. Okay. I really, it came from my intuition. And we're going to hope she comes out. I think I'm going to let the inspiration just uh, have you come over me. you touched it? It's a really fun consistency. Let me tell you, I haven't actually touched the clay yet, but I did just discover this bowler hat that I'm really excited about. Um, See? Feels very appropriate. To yeah. Me. <laughs> um, okay, so let me tell you guys, Ryan and I met at NYU. Um, we did the best scene in the world from a play called Boing Boing, which is a farce. I was German. Were you British? I think you Yes, British. I think I was British. Yeah. Uh, and it was literally really like core memory, the most fun rehearsal I had in college. Like, I had never played with someone in that way. Yeah. And from then on, we became really close friends. I mean, I always liked you because you're too really fucking cool. But <laughs> from that moment. Well, and I remember, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like you had seen this play on Broadway, right? I saw you... this play. 10 times yeah. on Broadway. And you were like really passionate about it. You like, and, and and once again, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it was like really crazy performances, right? Like Mark Rylance was- Catherine Kahn, Mark Rylance, Christine Baranski, Gina Gershon, Bradley Whitford, and oh, wow. Mary McCormack. It was just this like, and I yeah. was fresh into college when I saw it. I did not know. It was my first experience of like, actors in their joy yeah and being ridiculous i had to crouch down to pee i was laughing so hard like <laughs> it changed my life and i was like this is what i want to do forever so i brought that scene and i begged for that i like fought for that scene yeah i remember that. i remember that you really because it wasn't always i don't know they didn't always let us like pick our own stuff almost right never. Yeah. almost never at first the first because it was the farce class and at first i was like a jewish lady right and i was like cool 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 Great. but awesome. um well anyway i would love to know um other than dancing because we know that dancing is like in your soul was there do you have any like memories as a kid that just light you up like favorite play date play event day vacation whatever comes up mm -hmm. Um, ooh. And if it is related to dancing, it's okay. Well, because you, because you got me out, you got me on the dance, like, thing. I, I can remember, um, a particular performance that I got to see, um, that sort of incorporated, like, a couple of my loves, yes, tap dance, um, but also, like, drumming and, um, like basketball. There was this, there was this troupe, this, um, tap dogs. You probably heard of them. No, I 
Um, okay. <laughs> they sound great. They're awesome. There's, uh, it's like a, I think it's an Australian company and um, wow. they toured the world, the country um, for many years, probably like starting in the 90s. And I saw them, uh, probably one of the first live dance performances I'd ever seen. And uh, I remember meeting one of the dancers after the show. And plus I should, I should explain, it's like all men and they like, That's, they tap it. like a calling to your soul, like basketball tap and like. It was a couple, it was hitting on a couple of things for me for sure. And, yeah. and, and even more like cool uh, was that I like, got to um, meet one of the performers after the show. Like I just, like one of those like stage door kind of things. Yeah. But honest, I don't think my family knew about the stage door moment. We just happened upon these guys. Right, right, right. right. I got to meet them and I had them sign my hat and I just was like really taken by just that access in that moment, right? Like yeah. you see people age and they seem so far away and like you, um, or maybe really inspired by them, but you're like, oh, that like that's just so far. So far. I'll, I'll never know that. Um, but then, in an instance, I met them <laughs> right yeah. outside, and I was like, wow, okay, like like these people are just people. They're and, not um, that far. Yeah, they're right here. So that was really, really thrilling for me, and honestly, um, I think just set me on a pathway for like. I don't know. I think that like from a very young age, I I don't know that I could identify that things were divine or happening for a reason, but I was right. willing to receive something like that, like an experience like that, and then be, allow it to influence me, allow it to like pique my curiosity. Like, huh, I just went and saw something that I really enjoyed. And then all of a sudden I had this like one-on-one -on -one moment, like maybe I'm onto something here. Um, and yeah. so, I like would allow that to kind of like perpetuate. I'm, I'm actually curious. I want to flip it back to you. Do you have like a, like an early performance like experience? I, uh, I came late. Like my, my actual introduction to the stage was dance. Um, and I thought I was so good. Like I really did. I see videos and I was like, love it. But I thought I was ready to be back up Britney Spears dancer. Um, and then through, I fell in love, do you know about this? I fell in love with a pop star, like truly, Wait, named yes. Juanes. Yes, yes, we've talked about it. Yeah, because it was, it marked me because it took me to singing classes so that I could sing with him. And in singing classes, I met Phantom of the Opera and Les Mis and Jekyll and Hyde. And that's where my like, <gasps> happened, you know? But in dance, in dance, my parents always tell this story that when I was in my dance recitals, I would spend the entire recital on the, what do you call them? But like right, right backstage, bambalinas in Spanish. But like at the, at the, where they hand you the props? What's that area? Oh, like the wing? Yeah, the wing, the wing. I would hang at the wings, like watching the recital. But nice. I didn't know, in Mexico, it's not really reputable. <laughs> to be an actor or wasn't at that time. Um, so I didn't know that there were like good schools that you could go to. Oh, hi. Um, good school that you could go to to study this. Right. You know? Yeah, that also came on much later for I, me as well. Like I was going to ask, what was the moment where you were like, I'm going to do this professionally? Well, I had a few um, people. I, I was lucky enough to have a mentor who was like this uh, successful concert pianist who also happened to grow up in my hometown. Yeah. In a couple of years. Uh, um, and he uh, just recognized my talent and his name is Kevin Cole. And, uh, he kind of set me off on the like pre-professional journey. He, uh, he actually like invited me to come take a trip with him to New York City. Uh, oh, nice. but I saw some college. I saw that's what, like the first time I ever went to NYU actually, and I went to a few shows. I also got connected with a with a guy who was working on Broadway at the time, and I went to class with him like oh. at at Broadway Dance Center. Yeah. And he like just like was like, "Come on, you're coming with me. We're going to class," and uh, that was crazy because I was like in these classes with professional dancers and got my butt kicked for sure. But 
I was, but also I was kind of like, wait, I think that like, oh, so, yes. Also, yeah, I yeah. think I can, I can pull this off. And I saw um, shows, that trip. Uh, How many uh, shows? Two, two shows. Okay. I saw Chorus Line, which I think actually my friend Tyler, who's probably not here anymore. Yeah, I think he was in that, oh. actually. Uh, that, that production. And then I saw um, Hairspray. Yeah. At the Simon, which is where MJ is now as well, which is kind of crazy. Oh, wow. Particularly, I got to go backstage at uh, Hairspray at the Neil Simon. And uh, because the guy that I was with, like, knew somebody in the cast, and I got to, like, meet some of the actors. How and old I just, were you? Uh, at this point, I was, like, 16. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so like, I. I had like taken some dance like seriously a little more at this point. Uh-huh. First time that I was like, okay, yeah, like I I think I know what I have to do to to do, to this, do this to like for real. Yeah. So that was cool. Um, wow. And it's it takes like those little nuggets, right? Like to just spark your interest and and it's I mean, a curiosity that you follow. I think will always lead you somewhere 100%. good. 100%. You know? Yeah, I agree. Um, and then did you do, did you know that it was musical theater or did you think maybe just dance? Um, I think that it was musical theater. I was not a very like technical dancer. Like I- Oh, really? Like, half dancer, yeah. Um, and, and I liked hip hop. Right, like I, I yeah. did. It wasn't that great at it, but I, I liked it. Um, and like a lot of the dance programs, especially at that time, were concentrating more on ballet and modern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had no, no knowledge of that. Like I didn't, I didn't even know. But what you that also was. really like, and I say this as the best thing, silly showman. Like yeah, yeah. you love. Oh yeah. Telling stories in a very dynamic way yeah. where ballet is like that is the way 100 you know yeah yeah at that point like i had been really inspired by like heavy and fred Astaire and those guys who like made made a, a large part of their career really in film but musical films right yeah. so uh that's like what kind of got me into the musical specifically uh was watching those artists and, like do their thing and that that was like how I got into it, I guess, essentially, right? It was so cool. It used to be so. It used to be the cool thing, musical theater men. I mean, I think it's still the cool thing, but I think it as a collective, it was like the most handsome men in Hollywood were singing and dancing. I, there, you know, time period where like those were the superstars, were the, uh, for lack of a better like, and not like of the Brad Pitts or whatever the George Clooney. Yeah, said. the George Clooney. They were kind of like one and the same. You know. Can you imagine George Clooney in a musical? <laughs> ah, that would be so great. Um, yeah. <laughs> right? Why, why not? Yeah. I mean, him dancing. I feel like anyone who, who like Will Ferrell dancing, seriously, Ryan Reynolds dancing, I really love it. That's right. When sorry Actually, about that's that. Very I saw that. It was really right? Cool. It oh, yeah. is so good. You're like, and you know they're giving it their all. Like, it, I love it. I love it. Yeah. No, I, um, I want to ask you, is there, because one creative project that you, you came up with and championed that really marked you? Mm. Okay. Yes. One, I'm thinking of one. Um, and like, how did it mark you? Well, I, uh, I was back in 2021 when we were like just starting to, we were just starting to be able to like gather a little bit. So oh it was God. like May of like 21, the like, the like vaccines were just becoming rolled out after this like well, long. Recent. Kind of recent, yeah. yeah. And I, I had this opportunity because of this situation. To be honest, a friend of mine from once again my hometown, another like mentor. He you've been blessed with mentors. 
I have a lot of really brilliant mentors, really? actually. Yeah, people. Get you a mentor, people. That's uh, how you oh, get to where you want to be. I could, I could go, go, I could wax poetic on that yeah, all day long. Like, people who champion you and are like a soundboard uh, is so important. Like, I cannot even begin to, um, to, to, to punch home how, how, how imperative that was for how the stuff. How yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even like, it, it just it just allows you to see yourself. Yeah. Right. Someone else. I I think the the most incredible thing they do is, and I feel like coaches do this. Like they hold up a vision of what you could be. Yeah. And they make you believe that this is who you actually are, and you're like, whoa. Yeah. Okay. You no, know, it's. And like, it just gives you this courage and clarity. Hundred percent. That's it. Yeah. No, it's it's, uh, it's it's so important. And like this, in this particular instance, this is a guy who had encouraged me for quite some time. Um, but he was doing programming uh, for this uh, theater uh, near my hometown in Midland, Michigan, and uh, he was like, he was looking for something that I could do with the symphony orchestra there. They like have like a non-union symphony orchestra, yeah. And they they do a lot of classic works, of course, but then they try to sprinkle in some contemporary stuff as well. And so he was like, "I want to try to get you like tap dancing or something with the orchestra." And we we kicked around all these ideas about me tap dancing to like Mozart, and Ooh. and that seemed cool, really super scary. So I was like, "Ah, like that's like." really intimidating. Uh, I'm not sure that I'm like ready for all that. Yes. Um, but what I settled on was we found this, um, this piece of music called the Carnival of the Animals, um, which was written by Camille Saint-Saëns. And it's uh, a suite of um, music that each one is, each piece of music is a different animal. And so I created this like uh, sort of night at the museum style show, oh like night night at the zoo, I guess, where I was like this janitor who was weaving us through this suite of music. Um, but each, each like piece was either me becoming the animal or the janitor character like interacting with this animal. Oh my God. And I used a lot of puppetry and I obviously danced a lot, I did a lot of like physical, uh, like clowning type uh, Wait, story entire movie it i guess it could be honestly it was pretty like silly um the, the the sort of like unfortunate thing about this uh this like performance that i did was that it was i was billed with like a classical piece of music and i don't think that the audience was quite ready for this double uh feature like kind of stuffy music yeah acting like a clown in the second act um and also i really catered the show for kids and there honestly were not a lot of kids in the audience like uh, this sounds fascinating for adults it it's it could be i like it i would say for an adult audience uh i was doing some like really silly stuff did you ever see the show um like peter and the star catcher yes okay so i i was in, eternally uh, inspired by that show when I saw oh it on Broadway, no. um, specifically like the stagecraft of it. Wait, didn't you and work with Christian Borle? I ended up working with Christian Borle after the fact. Oh, yes, that's epic. I saw this guy uh, Christian in the show and was like, "Oh my gosh, this guy's amazing!" Um, actually, I saw it like right before we graduated, Lore. We we had uh, I think my parents were in town for commencements, oh. and oh. that's the show we went to go well, it was see. a very special show and it was it was sort of like childhood joy make believe it was just like very beautiful yeah this is really really cool um so anyway I, I i referenced that because uh i was really curious about making performance like that like making something that uh i i would use like I took a mop Right, so fabric, uh, like stringy mop, and I put it on my head, and that's how the lion. That's how I became the lion. Oh, perfect! So, 
Yeah, yeah. So I was, I was like trying to like conjure these animals using stuff that like a janitor would have, right? That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, it's kind of funny that we're making puppets right now because one of the one of the things I was proud of was I made a turtle. You made a puppet. I made a turtle puppet with a. I took a green bucket, like upside down. That was like the shell, and then I had like. There you go, exactly. And then I had like little dowels like that I had fixed on the bucket. And then I took two toilet paper like rolls and stuck it on the dowel. So that was like its eyes. Yeah. And then I took two plungers. I, had, I wish I had a photo of this. I mean, I do have a photo, I wish I had it handy. But I took two plungers and I held it in front of the bucket as its legs. And then I held the bucket like between my legs. Yes. On feet could be the back turtle. legs yes. turtle. Does that Wait, make sense? Dude, that's really brilliant. Yeah. And then I did like the can-can with this turtle creature. That was the whole, that was the bit. Um, oh my God. I don't think that's too silly. I, are you saying that's the too silly part? Uh, there was a, there was a couple other sure like- there were maybe, silly parts. Yeah, oh yeah. But I think that's your soul too, like, and I think people really enjoy sharing that with you. I hope so. so I think that, like, at the end of the day, when thing, you have to create something that you really like. Yeah. And if you create something that you really so like, you, and you, you can't create something. Like, it's it's really hard to create something you don't like because that means you're not listening. <laughs> like, and I think you know, people pick up on that. Like, right? Like, they can tell that you love it. You like it, or you don't like it right like of that's course. a thing that they they can see i think wow yeah oh. anyway. i love and and so that was right after the pandemic so that was like, like yeah like i said like probably my first appearance on a stage um after like you know a year and some change right, of all of us like not being able to be together and uh specifically be like in a, a communal space yeah yeah it was really cool Cool. It was really special uh, to have that opportunity. Yeah. And what did, can I ask? What did you like as an artist or as a person? What did you learn? Like, how did you change because of that? Well, process? I think in in that uh, scenario, I was like, uh, there was like a resiliency um, that I had to like pull out because up until that point, like for the last year and a half, like we were not making things for an audience. And I was also, I was not really able to collaborate with many people on this because yeah. of constraints. Um, and uh, so I, I, well, I learned two things that like, in order to, to make anything important or make anything for that matter, like you have to have resilience. Like, Artists are going to be posed with challenges like all of the time, most of the time, really. Like, people don't want to uh, spend money on the arts, or they don't want to. Uh, You're met with like resistance on every corner. Yeah, and you have to like, you have to push through that, like, continue to have and, and uh, really believe that what you're offering is is important. Um, and, and that can be challenging, right? That can be like really hard sometimes. But I think that uh, in the, in this particular instance, in creating the show, I realized like how important that was, even just for me, right? To go through that, to get to make something and reconnect with that part of myself. Yeah. Um, really, really special. Um, so, yeah, I learned that. And then also, uh, per the part of like not being able to work with anybody, I I realized the like importance of collaboration. Oh my I, like, oh my. I really missed like having someone to bounce ideas off of. I know you've probably experienced that, Lene. I know you do a lot of writing and like you can kind of drive yourself crazy when you're making something and you're like, I don't like, no, I'm lost in the woods. I can't tell if this is just the this like, is good or not. crap I've ever written or if I've made or, or what. So I, I just like really uh, rediscovered the importance of collaboration, having good collaborators. Oh know? my God. Well, I wanted to ask, like, if you, because I think resilience is, is a practice, <laughs> like, um, you know, it's in your spirit, but like, uh, do you have, 
how do you, I, this is why I'm so passionate about joy because I feel like it sort of fuels you to withstand the hard yeah. and the no's and, and what we do, it's like rejection all the time. And then pulling out your insecurities, showing them to you and rejecting you. Like, you know, it's just a heavy journey. And so would you, do you have like things that you do rituals or practices that sort of protect your joy? Although I know you work in something you love, love so much, which I think like, that's the, that's the dream. Yes. Very lucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, uh, I think that like, I think for me, I mean, I think entering into this, uh, this pathway of an art, as an artist, mm -hmm. what got me into this in the first place, which is, I think just like my joy for music first. Yeah. You're uh, right. I, I like can go back to just finding music that I really like to listen to and that like can spark just like a if not just if not joy straight up joy maybe some comfort but I can yeah act the joy yeah uh, I think also like uh, and you you kind of hit the nail on the head I mean you, yes of course I get to work uh, at a really cool job that brings me a lot of joy but also um, the people that I work with like them and their enthusiasm, their, uh, what they bring to the work uh, is like an endless well of inspiration, right? Oh. Like we all, hopefully we all have like friends that are nearby and uh, that will like, we can look to them and see what they're up to and just get like so inspired by that. I remember being in school with some of the folks we went to school with and like seeing, going to performances and being like, oh my gosh, like this, seeing you wholly in that way i am like i'm so inspired by that um my god yes yeah so like it's it's the people right it's like the community i love that and then i also wanted you were talking about collaboration and i'm fascinated by creativity and lately i've really learned to sort of I've sort of uncovered something for myself in my creative process where it really feels like I'm collaborating, like I'm getting these ideas from the project, from the spirit, from this company, from like there's a soul that's separate from mine yep. that I am, I am being chosen to channel. And like, that is very exciting. But in that sort of relationship, I have felt less alone, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. and I've, I've, I've even bounced ideas back. Like I've also, I've made it sort of like an outside of myself invitation to play together. Yep. And it's really changed everything for me. Like, do you, have you ever, when you're dancing, cause there's moments where you're like doing the steps in a really fun way. And then there's moments where you're like lost in it. Totally and sort of like something happens. Can you talk about those moments? Yeah, I think what you're, I actually just recently um, have been, in, I've been in this acting class actually, and we would talk about like this, like flow state, right? Yes. Where, where you're like, there's not really right or wrong at that point. Like, Freedom, yeah. genius, accidental genius. Yeah, and like, I think this, I think in the context of like a show, when you're actually like doing a show that has you know, you have to, you have to accomplish certain things. You can't like click out, you know, and, yeah. and go, but if you do like have such a clear understanding of the parameters yeah, that, and, and also like uh, the license and the, the freedom, the permission to yeah. like uh, discover yeah. that like, you are making those kinds of um, discoveries, right? Or that those kinds of, you're getting to that place you're of being like. Being able to stay present. You're just you, exactly. I, I think that's the definition of presence, right? Like, yeah. uh, uh, and so when I'm dancing, I mean, this honestly, I think this comes up like mostly, and this is this is maybe going to be uh, not what people want to hear because I think sometimes people struggle with these moments. But um, sometimes when I'm auditioning, yeah. that is when I access those those, those spaces. Yes, with, I love that. I, mean, I love that you said that. Right? Like, I think that people oftentimes get really intimidated by auditions and that's me too 
that does happen. Um, oh my God, Broadway, but Broadway dancer auditions is no joke. It's intense, Broadway and like, I don't even. Never been. Um, it, it, I mean, intense, and also like, it can be very amazing and communal too, right? Like, like it's. Uh, you have to be. There's a. Be so good. There's a to be level. Exactly. Yes. There's yeah. a level, of course, that like we 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 see this or we've experienced it, whatever. Um, but also. When, when you're in that space, when you've um, gotten, whether you're invited or you just find yourself there, um, and even if we're not talking about a Broadway dance audition, but any audition experience, when you just take off that layer that's like, I have to be this or I have to be that, and you just are like it's that. It's the moment your career changes. Like when you get that in your spirit, it's the moment yeah. Like to me, because it's so hard. I mean, you said something earlier, like when you know the parameters, which means it's in your body, you've rehearsed, you have the tools, you know, like yep. you're free to exist in the world you've, you've been placed on. Yes. But in, in auditions, it's really hard to get from, let me show you how good I am to like, hi, this is what I got, you know, like this is who I am. And I think that jump changes the like for me broadway dancing i could never be fully present because so many issues <laughs> around like the dancing and the people i was competing with and the girls and the kicks and you know i wasn't technically proficient enough sure. to feel free sure. but in acting like i feel like when you do all the prep and you're ready and you're trained and you know what you're doing with the character if you're able to bring your joy into the audition that's where you get moments that surprise yourself and create really exciting connections you know yes i mean that i think you just tapped into something really really tr like true that like moment of surprise right like that's oh. like we're always trying to get to that place where like we surprise either ourselves or the audience um both is probably exciting yeah, uh, yeah. and that's like where we're trying to get to, I think, as artists, right? Like, um, we want to be like a step ahead of the audience, or we want we want them to like really lean in and, and try to understand what what is happening, yeah. right? Like what we're yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's like a very it's rarefied air, but I think it happens more often when you get to that place where you're driving, where like there's just no. Um, I don't know there's no insecurity right or there's no like yeah, i feel like that has always been a true strength of yours like i've always seen you enjoy the dance and we had teachers that were sort of mean <laughs> and like um really were sapping the joy out of the room and like you always remained in it and you always i love dancing it brings me so much joy but when it's away from my ability i get stressed you know um but like you always you always bring the joy man it's really it was really beautiful thanks thank you, thank you. i uh, it was e easy for me because i really do i really do love dance because like you're a profesh. yeah yeah i really like it uh and in those oh, in good. those scenarios um we had we had some really great great classmates too like we had some people who we were at the highest like that's the problem that i was at a level with you and naomi and like and me you know what i mean like <laughs> i it, it, i was like overwhelmed because i couldn't do what other people could do because i i'm here to like dance as a plus sure you know a strong plus but i'm not gonna no i definitely hear what you're saying but i also feel like there's room for for all of it right like i don't know yeah. what what you may have thought you were lacking like in technique um you would bring doubly in like your storytelling right like, yeah, yeah yeah we all uh, had our strength yeah yeah exactly for exactly. sure i do feel like so much of college is like figure i mean to, for me i, I was coming from a Catholic all girls high school in Mexico to NYU, like yes. it was, it takes, it, 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 it was
it was shocking and i was like who am i like what do i actually believe what do i want and and while you're figuring out how to act and how to dance and being told you're too whatever like it's a very intense experience but theater is where i felt like as long as i come back to this this will all make sense one day you know well and you've like like you have really um devoted so much of your your life to this that craft to this craft oh, right yeah. like you've gone to a lot of schooling like you have yeah yeah you you like are whenever i like an actress if i put in the work, i honestly think of you like you oh my god butt off. thank you for saying that yeah thank you um, yeah. Do you, was there a point, it seems to me from the outside and like, don't hate me, but like you are so effortlessly great that, and you love it so much that you just really shine and you've had that since college. In my opinion, like it's really worked out for you. <laughs> you know, like in my opinion, like your sure. dreams are coming true and like not, not, not effortlessly, but like sort of effortlessly, you know, but was there, you can disagree and like kill me, but like, was there a moment where it felt really hard where you were stuck and like, yeah. what? Um, I will say that like, for, for what you said, I won't disagree that like, there have been some doors for me. Uh, you deserve every door because the work you've put into your dance and the freedom, like, this is not by any means like things come easy to you. No, 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 no. I know. It's so good that you've risen to the top I, effortlessly. I don't take it as like diminishing it at all, for sure. I think that I, if I were to say like, was there a hard moment? I do think that like, it's funny. I've analyzed this a little bit, and I and I don't know that I have like all the right answers or like exactly how it went down. But I, when I came to New York. Um, just like when you were describing coming from like Mexico to all, uh, all girls Catholic school, I came from like a very, very small town in Michigan. Yeah. Um, where uh, there just wasn't a lot of other people who were thinking like I was thinking, right? Like uh, who were really passionate about performance. Um, but I would say the biggest takeaway um, and, and one that I, I'm very proud of is that like, I grew up with very hard workers. Uh, like most of my family are farmers. And oh, so wow. at first- I didn't know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I come from a family of mostly farmers on both sides of my family. Um, when I came to New York, I uh, was really afraid of failing and like having I, 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 And not that I like hated my life in Michigan. I just, I just didn't want to like, more than anything, I think that I had my family and not, not, not all, but they had kind of broadcast me as like the kid who's going to New York and like gonna try to do that. And I was like really afraid of like failing. What if I, I'm not? Yeah. Oh my God, yeah, terrifying. I tried, but I didn't happen and I had to move back, blah, blah, blah. And so I was really determined to not let that happen. Of and, course. And so, if anything, if there was any point that was like really hard for me where I really had to like dig deep, it would have been like when I first moved out here, right? Where I was like very, very disciplined. I, um, I, didn't, really, I didn't really go out much. Um, and to the point where it was like a little bit too much. I uh, maybe missed out on a lot of experiences because I was um, sheltering myself a little bit um, out of fear. Yeah. And so, uh, if there was a hardship moment, it was at that time when I was discovering how to like be true to myself, but also uh, be, um, I guess, let go enough to really express myself as an artist. Yeah. But keep the discipline, keep the hard work, so that like I didn't fall off the handle, which was. I felt like I was very capable of. Right? I think yeah. that's a true, uh, it's such a dancer mentality in the best way. Yeah. Like that's a gift that you're like, I must, you know, you're focused. 
Because yep. to me, I I saw over 500 Broadway shows while I was in college. Wow. Like, wow. yeah, and, and I'm not exaggerating because I, I counted the playbills once and I didn't <laughs> have the repeated ones. And I saw like Wicked 12 times, Boing Boing. Like I was just really obsessed with this and I couldn't believe that it was three subway subs away. Right there. And I remember David Hibbert said this once. He was like, go to the small town college because you're going to get distracted in New York. You know, yeah. and I got to, I got to, I mean, I also graduated and did great, but like, I didn't have the sort of discipline and focus that comes with the life of a dancer. Sure. You know? And that like, yes, dance. And I, mean, I didn't learn this even as I like became a professional. Like I, I had had like some training in dance, but as I continued to make my way through the biz, yeah, I, and I had become more disciplined i was like wow like if you really want to dance i mean you laura you know a little bit about like the shows that i've gotten to dance in and honestly they've gotten harder i, I like, know like i know i remember once i hadn't seen you in a while and then you showed up with these like pets and there's like muscle and i was like right about the boom so I, like, I, did, I had to like get better as i got older like yeah. i didn't really i didn't really peak when i was a younger guy That's i great it was it was oh, very that's exciting it, very, to me very exciting are you kidding me like i uh i look at like me dancing years ago and i'm like wow i've, I've like i've gotten better um you really like there's things really have. there's things that like i maybe can't do as effectively right because of uh, an, uh like an aging body but i feel like i've gained in either like perspective or dynamics or I, uh, there's a, i have to say i have to say because you're you're insane. Like it's amazing what you can do, and you have crazy tricks. But your magic is not in your tricks. Like what you bring to the storytelling and to the dance is like a thing, a, a thing of dream, like a dream of choreographers. And I think that's why you're gonna hit, live your whole life in this art form in some way or another. Because your genius is like beyond the ability of the body that's very good it's true it, it's true it like overwhelms me i want to cry <laughs> i love you <laughs> i love you i uh, i certainly like feel very very alive and uh uh i mean endlessly inspired by the theater i don't know it, I, like i feel like we're gonna like circle back on what we were talking we about we can circle back to the theater all day but just the like, like just the sheer and I felt this like during during the pandemic it, I like doubled down on this where I was like no theater is essential like we need these spaces uh for people to commune and tell stories and laugh and cry together and like because I grew up in the church but I didn't always feel super uh comfortable there um pretty much never really for me um yeah. And uh, so when I discovered the theater, that became like my my church, so to speak. It's, it's a really, I, I think it's a sacred space. And like, you talk about this thing that you did that with the animals and the Jenner and the tap and like everyone lights up and like, we wish we could be there. And it makes the you having been there so much more special. You know, it's like a once in a lifetime moment in time. Yeah. It's so magical. It's crazy to me. That's not more popular. Like I agree with you, and I, I'm I'm racking my brain right now, like because I feel myself uh, someday transitioning to like, as you said, like I, th I don't think I'll, I think I'll always be involved in the theater. I just don't know that I'll always be on the stage. Yeah, and I'm e eager, excited, curious about like how we get more people in theater like what what is it like how do we make it really freaking cool to anybody who goes you know what i mean like yeah uh, like and i mean cool and like the most like like pandering to like a young person who like just wants to be cool right like yeah. how do we like involve in the theater you know um or any right for anybody who who well, I think Michael Jackson is doing that, like yeah. because it has this. It's Len Nottage, right? 
not it. That's yes. crazy. Like it has, it's Michael Jackson music, Lynn Nottage writing. Wait, who choreographed? Christopher Wheeldon. So he's like the ballet thing. Yeah. He's like. Like it's, it's this like combination and I'm, and not to be a snob, but like I became a little bit of a theater snob and I've, I've been told that it also satisfies the like theater people, you know, that like it has all of this magic and it has this like contemporary alive thing and that the dancing is like a whole other level. Yeah. Well, we, we were graced with um, like this music catalog that is like, <laughs> you know, epic. You find us. Uh, yeah, like, not, um, you know my puppet's gonna be able to have a puppet thing. Oh, maybe. Sorry, tell oh, yeah. me. Uh, um, no, I was just saying that, like, the, with MJ, like, it's got this music that, like, I, I, I can't imagine finding a person who doesn't love, right? Like, or, or, or at least can respect it. Um, oh, yeah. So I'm like, okay, how do we get, we need to get more, like, music like new music that sounds appealing to young people and that people want to create to or with alongside whatever like how do we do that i think it's a very worthy um lifelong journey <laughs> like how to bring people to the theater oh it is the toughest dancing on broadway yeah um how to bring people to the theater is like such a worthy and I think right now in this moment in time in America, it's so such an important conversation. Totally. Yes. You know? 100%. Um, what was I going to ask you? When you're dancing, this is my, this is my, um, what's his name? The boy? Billy, 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 Billy Elliot. Oh, Billy Elliot. Yeah. Yes. This is my Billy Elliot question. Um, how does it feel like when you're dancing? Ooh, good question. I like that. Yeah. Wow. Actually, um, I, it's funny you asked me this question because I, I'm not gonna be able to, I have to pull it up, but I, I won't right now because I, I've tried to do it from memory, but I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bastardize this like Do quote, it. but it talked about this like poem um, that I read recently that I actually posted on my Instagram somewhere. Uh, it was something along the lines of like, when I'm dancing, I cannot judge. I cannot like, I, I cannot like engage in all these things that cloud like the way, like the like truest, self right oh my like, god and so when i'm dancing and, it's, and it literally says like when i'm dancing all there is is joy right all there is is like expression and that that hit me pretty hard when i the first time i read it um because it's therapeutic i think for me oh my god. right uh, uh there's like a there's a, a release that comes over me when i get to dance and and this is whether i'm like dancing on stage in front of people or whether I'm like just messing around in a, a studio, right? like, it doesn't really matter. Uh, like the opportunity to move my body and express in that way is uh, so sacred to me that like, I, I really don't take, take it for granted. You said yeah. something my whole life right now. And the reason I'm doing this, like everything right now is surrounding the like mystery of joy and to to express your joy whether it's in a productive or unproductive way i think it's even better when it's unproductive when it's just for the sake of joy like you can trust that person oh. that person is like aligned with your highest self and touching on that is sacred and it oh. it makes your life it like lights up the rest of your life and lights up the path i think you're the epitome of like you followed your joy all the way to broadway yes yes 100 you know? and, and you know, on broadway you continue to follow your joy in your creative expression and that to me oh god it's 
exciting. It's like, it's such a gift. Uh, it's like not lost on me, like how, um, how lucky I am to yeah. like do it. Um, and like, we, we've talked about MJ quite a bit, but um, it, it feels appropriate because um, like- We can talk Broadway, we can't just talk, we can't talk TV shows. We can promote Broadway all day. <laughs> Yeah, and also like TV, you won't get much out of me with TV because you know I'm not like a big, I'm not a big TV guy. But I like with MJ specifically, it has been such a gift to be a part of the show. Like I can't even tell you like how special it has been for me to like get to be a part of that community, get to share a show like that about an artist like Michael, who inspired me, inspires me to this day. Like it's, it's like really, it's really cool. Really cool. It's really, really cool. cool. Um, what would you say to like little, little Ryan watching that basketball tap? Honestly, uh, I, um, I wouldn't really say anything other than like, keep going, you know, I, I, oh, I, I high five. Yeah, like, like, rock it out, man. I don't know, like, I, I think that, um, and I, I think I'd be remiss not to mention, um, like, my folks in all of this. Yeah. They were very encouraging of me and also just, like, took me to these places to see these artists and, yeah. and, 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 like, pique my curiosity and, and encourage it even. So, uh, oh, God, that's the best thing you can do to a God. kid. Like, truly, like, uh, uh, life changing. I mean, life affirming. Whatever, like life making, all the, like, you know. Yeah, they gave me such a huge, huge gift by just like saying yes to these like crazy ideas that I had sometimes, um, and so that makes it easy for me in this moment to look at my former self, my younger self, and just and just say like, keep going, right? Like, yeah. I had such great support. Um, already that like, luckily, I wouldn't have needed um, a future self to tell me to do something differently, right? Like That's I had- so great. I had really- I don't have that. Yeah, I had- just had, I wish my future self was there all the time. Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, I, I would just say trust it, right? Like, just, just trust it. Um, you and, never, did you- like I struggled so much in in sort of like figuring out who I really was, uh -huh. and and I made choices against my intuition. Often, sure. you like in college, before college, after like it it and I, and I I think there's also something there on being a woman and like the the society like <clears throat> that you just get and the body and the, you know but like oh. it took me when you say like just share who you are at auditions just like be don't try and be what you think they want like that to me was like a very long lesson learned to actually be like wait i don't have to like curl my hair extra talk with an accent i don't have to like i can be this childlike bright Latina, and this is what I would bring to this story, you know. Yep. But you never, you sort of always knew, and I'm very jealous. I don't know that I always knew. I think that, like, if if we're comparing the journeys, and, and not that it's a comparison necessarily, but I, you had like some extra challenges, Lode. Like, you uh, are an immigrant. Like, there's just like there are yeah. like things in the way, and I think the. The, the business is becoming more progressive. I think we can argue that that's, that is what's happening. But like, yeah. when I first joined the business, like, I mean, you knew me then, like I was wearing the jewel tones and I was like, trying to be like, <gasps> and I was like, had my hair combed over here and, and that's like fine and everything. But there is this period of like, I think for every artist of like, you only can know what you know and like you look at people who've done it before you and you maybe compare yourself to them and you say okay see this mold of a of, a, of an artist i'm gonna like strive like strive to be that mold right and then maybe you're really good at imitating and you actually do that um and then and this is kind of what i think i did i like 
imitated, imitated, imitated until I did that until I was like blue in the face. And then I was kind of like, I gotta tap into something that is a little bit more real. And what's kind of crazy is that my, my imitating also got me success, right? Like I, well, I think you were really good at it. I was pretty good at it. Um, but then I think you, I, there came you, a point you, you where like I was stole like, stole okay, in the best way. You like stole. Totally. You weren't like trying to be, it felt like you were just like, I'm gonna steal this, I'm gonna steal this. Totally. I'm, and I think that's like fair game in art. I think that is probably like what training ultimately is, right? Like, like you, you have like your instrument that does what it does. And then you take information and you filter it through your instrument, right? But I have to say, I, I think musical theater training is the most dangerous one in the creative. Like it feels, yeah. it was, the musical theater school was different from the acting schools. And like, there's a lot of people that's stopped liking theater because of it, that like have true trauma from, cause it's just a little constrictive and, or was, but then on Broadway, you see a difference. You see like artists being whoever they want to be, you know, but I do think like, at, at least in our time, musical theater training was sort of like movie level traumatic <laughs> for some people, you uh, know? I would agree. Um, and like, I think that like, I don't know, maybe our teachers were doing the best that they could with what okay. the information that they had, Before. but like, not to absolve the, necessarily like the situations, but um, like, I think we realized after a while and especially like during the pandemic that like we were making theater or thinking about theater was like not sustainable, right? Like, yeah. Uh, and that goes to the training as yeah. well, right? Like that, like you, you had a lot of, I mean, think about the, the artists that we went to school with that most of them are not doing musicals anymore. Like, no. That's not a I know, it's wild. Whatever, like almost I, no one is doing musicals. Like they like didn't the the musicals weren't giving back to them. Like they weren't seeing themselves yeah. in these. Yeah. Um, so they looked elsewhere. Uh, and I don't I don't can't can't blame them. But you know? so many. What I love about our class is like so many of us are like doing the thing that we said we wanted to do as we grow and we're, we've been like remolding it yes to, to who we want to become but i see i see all the cat people like thriving you I know thriving oh yeah yeah oh yeah like doing doing their own thing for sure it's like, really exciting to to be a part of that pool i agree you know yeah, i agree i'm proud actually to to have shared space with a lot of those folks can uh, i see your puppet I, I like am making some moves right now that like, I am now, I'm now in endowing this creature with like facial features. Yeah. I, it's just that gravity got to mine cause she yeah. started, she started pretty upright and oh, she's a little, she's a little. God, Laura, you're so Look at her. What? I said, you're so talented. Oh my God. I think you but now she looks like a little frog witch. She just started I, like going down, down, down. Oh my god, that's a little frog. Is that frog? It's a frog, I think. Yeah, you a frog. Or With like, a or, or, or no, you know, what? I think it's more like a turtle. It's Let got me, the shell. That's his shell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This I'll take the, turtle. I'll take turtle with a mustache. That's a mustache. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> I oh. love how you made it. <laughs> oh. What a, what a, oh no. Yeah, the, the mustache is falling off. Oh my but. god. Do you know that if you leave it, it'll 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 get it'll get stiff. Oh really? It and like, it'll last forever. Oh my god, look at you. Oh <laughs> you love this. What's his name? Um, this is, uh, oh, are you tired? He's sad. Oh. No, I'm sorry. He wants to go play. He's taking, oh my gosh, taking a nap. This is Frederick. Frederick, right. Oh, Fred, come here, Fred. All right. <laughs> Fred, what a great mustache. <laughs> What's oh. yours name? Um, you know what? 
there was a song when I was little called La Brujita Boba Bo. Boba Bo. Boba Bo. And she was really dumb. She couldn't use her broom. There was a whole song. Um, and as, as gravity started, she started like cool and powerful. But as gravity took over, she feels like La Brujita Boba Bo. <laughs> I love Honestly, her. Honestly, you say that gravity is messing with her. She looks pretty pristine to me, if I'm you, honest. No, she's just like, she just she's, squinched down. Oh. She had like elongated features. Great. Like this tall. A really beautiful body. And the more weight I put on it, the more she. But I, I'm a little bit obsessed with her. I'm going to say the same thing that, that mine looks a little better than this before, but you know. Yeah. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I love the turtle has like a wide neck and face. Yeah. Uh, very flat. Very uh, flat. It's why he gets a little tired. It's hard to hold up. <laughs> I, I have turtles in the brain because I just saw the Ninja Turtle movie. Oh my uh, God, I heard it's amazing. It's very good. And as someone who like talking about like a childhood, uh, like nostalgic thing, I, I was pretty <sighs> I read in an interview that they wanted to do the animation as if it was a teenager doodling on his notebook. And I think that's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's like exciting. The, the particularly the anima animation was really striking um, and beautiful. Like I see, have you seen um, the Spider-Man movies, the new one, the Spider-Verse films? Yeah. I get the feeling like I love animated films. And like, I love the like Pixar and like, and it's classic true. Disney. Art is very exciting. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like since the Spider-Verse, I feel like we're headed into a new realm of, Animation. yeah, it's yeah. It's like anything's possible. It's really yeah. exciting. Yeah, the Ninja yeah. Turtles is the same, same deal. Like it's, it's pretty, pretty good. I liked it. Okay, I'm gonna watch it. I am so great. This was, I could stay here five hours. I know. but. Are we gonna have to edit around five hours? Um, I cannot tell you how special this has been for me. I Same. am so proud to call you my friend. I love you so much. I you. promise I'm gonna get to New York soon. Um, are you? You well, we'll talk about this later. <laughs> um, well, well, next week plans. Next, yeah. Um, I love you. Um, love I, you I hope you feel better. Thank you. That's yeah, it. Do all the things. I'm like, like doing a little bit of moving, shaking, trying to like get it loosened up. But this is luckily for me, although this is unfortunate, I like have been here before, so I'm not like too. Uh, but it, it is annoying um, when this happens. Yeah. It's like the back, back is so deb it's debilitating. Like when this happens, I'm like, I'm literally fine, but I cannot be doing MJ the musical no. right now. It's not going to no, work. Out. As a dancer, like every part of your body has to sort of be. It has to sort of be in a good, in a good place. Working order, indeed. Yeah. Yes. Um. Well, I love you. I, love I you. will talk to you soon. Thank you so much for this. This was so fun. Can you please save Frederick? Yes, okay. of course. Okay. Don't throw Frederick away. No, 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 no. Okay. You will find a nice on. Uh, well, on uh, my nightstand, of course. Of course. Keep, uh, right next to you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I love you. I will talk to you soon. And thank you everyone who joined. That's so cool. Yes. Thank you, Laurie. Thanks for having me. My, my love. Bye. Bye. Thank you.